Welcome to the first video from Military Intelligence Explained. This video is going to be talking about the controversial Force Design 2030, which is going to be the new blueprint for the United States Marine Corps moving on in the future. The Marine Corps announced in 2018 that it will be making drastic changes to the entirety of the Marine Corps. This comes as the global war on terrorism dies down with the majority of the fighting being limited to host nations and special operation forces. And with that being said, the U.S. Marines is now shifting its mission focus and I quote, from countering violent extremists in the Middle East to great power peer level competition with special emphasis on the Indo-Pacific. The Marine Corps is returning to its historic role in the maritime littoral zone with greater integration with the Navy. What that means is that there is no more training Marines for combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. Therefore, a shift in focus in training Marines against enemies with near peer capabilities like Russia and China. So the question is, how do they plan on doing this? The force design is split up into these four phases. Phase one, which began in July of 2019, focused on the problem framing and visualization. Phase two, which began in September of 2019, focused on assessing current design and to, and to develop future recommendations. Phase three will concentrate on rapid and iterative wargaming analysis and experimentation. Phase four will develop on refinement, validation, implementation, via the planning, programming, budgeting, and execution system. With all these changes also comes the proposal of getting rid of certain units and beefing up other units. To simplify this, we will categorize them by the addition and subtraction of these units, starting with the subtraction of them. As you see on your screen, the Commandant is reducing numbers in a lot of areas. These areas include heavy lift squadrons, tilt rotor, attack helicopters, and a lot more fields. Most notably, the removal of all four tank battalions and law enforcement battalions, including three active duty and one reserve battalion equivalent. It is believed that a 70-ton tank won't be useful on a small Pacific island. For example, the Subi Reef, a Chinese airbase being only 976 acres, or the Fiery Cross Reef, another Chinese airbase boasting only 677 acres. In a world with deadly ATGMs and long-range precision weapons, this is not 1945, where a tank can come within 50 meters of an enemy emplacement and survive. A perfect example of this would be present-day Middle East like Iraq and Syria. Nevertheless, moving on, another component being reworked is the three law enforcement battalions, which is basically the police force for the Marine Corps. Reasoning behind this move said by the Commandant is, capacity is excess to our current needs. The Commandant says that with the change of operational practices, the gap can be fixed. It is important to note that with all these MOS codes being lost, that these Marines are being offered a chance to go into a new field or transfer to different branches in certain cases. Now, on the flip side, Force Design is increasing the number of units in these categories. Rocket Artillery Batteries and Uninhabited Air Systems Rocket Artillery, like the M142, HIMARS, a portable artillery unit that can be used in shoot and screw engagements and even fired off the back of U.S. Navy ships, giving the Marines long-range precision capabilities. And uninhabited air systems, UAV and UCAVs, like the U.S. Navy's X-47B or the RQ-21 Blackjack, both of which provide its operators with low-risk, low-cost options for operations. With those being the only two receiving unit increases, they are getting a lot of attention in future plans. Bringing up the next question in this video, how do they plan on fighting in the future? On the surface, the plan is simple. The Commandant wants the Marine Corps to be a smaller, faster, and more elite force. The reasoning behind the reduction and even riddance of units is that the less money spent on unnecessary areas, the more money to spend on research and the upgrade on current equipment. There will be a lot of effort put into developing long-range precision munitions and smart weapons like Russia and China is currently doing to build up their arsenal. As the Commandant says, we must acknowledge the impacts of proliferated precision, long-range fires, mines, and other smart weapons, and seek innovative ways to overcome these threat capabilities. As mentioned before, the Marine Corps is going to invest a lot of money into rocket artillery batteries that currently have an effective fire range of 300 kilometers or 190 miles at a cost point of only 5.1 million USD per launcher, including its ammunition, as well as reallocating $12 billion USD to equipment modernization, training, modernization, and force development priorities. Part of this vision is for every Marine to have better equipment on an individual level. 
It is very common to hear that the Marines get the hand-me-downs from the Army and that is supposed to change. With all the money saved from the reduction of units, it will be reinvested in long-range precision munitions like armored reconnaissance, modernization, and updated training. With all the change being made to certain units, there's also a change in how the Marine Corps will operate in Grey Zone. One big point that Commandant made was entry-level training, which for the Marines would be MCT and ITB, where Marines get their job training. Another huge point is the new MLR, which means Marine Literal Regiment. The new Literal Regiment will consist of a combat team, an anti-air battalion, and a logistics battalion. The combat team will be organized around an infantry battalion and a long-range anti-ship battery consisting of about 2,000 Marines. The purpose of this new formation is that the United States may not be able to dominate an area like in the past, so the need for a formation that is able to fight in a complex and rapidly changing environment is where the MLR will come in handy. Over time, the specifics of the MLR will begin to take shape. Experiments, war games, and modeling and simulation will play a key role in the phased approach to the MLR development, the Marine Corps Commandant said. Before I start the summary to all that was said, a side note is that the Commandant placed a heavy emphasis that simulation, experiments, war games, and modeling will play a huge role. So here's the summary. The Force Design 2030 is a 15 page document, link in the description, where the Commandant of the Marine Corps has outlined the future of the Marine Corps, smaller, faster, and elite. FD-2030 has proposed the reduction of many units and the complete divest of tanks and law enforcement battalions as listed here, but with the addition of numerous rocket artillery batteries and uninhabited air system. With the focus on long-range precision weapons and drone capabilities, as well as the defense of the latter two. The FD-2030 plans on incorporating long-range precision weapons to strike land and sea targets and have them everywhere as well as many different types of UAVs and UCAVs to give them a low risk, low cost option for ISR, logistical and combat purposes. Another focus will be the reinvestment of $12 billion USD for the modernization of equipment and entry level training like ITB and MCT and basic training, making Marines better at what they do. Next will be the FD 2030 outlining the possibility and the need for reorganizing certain formations within the Marine Corps, like the Fleet Marine Force and Marine Expeditionary Units. But with the addition of another formation called the MLR, Marine Littoral Regiment, the MLR is a force that can operate in a contested maritime environment that can respond and fight in a complex and rapidly changing fight. And that is all for the summary and the video. So with all this information you received, do you think the force design is going to innovate the Marine Corps or is it going to make it worse? That's up to you. 